contrarian, leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. He called the housing crash, he called the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, and the crisis in the Eurozone banking system. we're doing is Veritasium is launching its official ICO, its official crowdfunding effort. Um, what we're doing is to give you a quick example, a quick history of Veritasium. In 2013, I came up, uh, I had a, uh, with a brainchild, and that was to take um, an ISDA swap agreement and recreate it as a smart contract in software. Phenomenal idea. I'm positive you were the first to do it. We implemented it in Bitcoin, which was difficult, but we were able to do it. Um, it's still trading, uh, but we had to pull it because of regulatory concerns. The CFTC now is the regulatory authority over Bitcoin, and theoretically, we could have been seen as uh, needing to register as a swap execution facility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In addition to that, the ability to create smart contracts t took an awful lot of uh, brain power and horsepower. Ethereum was launched shortly thereafter, and Ethereum um, was a massive undertaking. Now, I'm looking at the ability of um, smart contracts and look at the growing network effect of both Bitcoin, which is significant and misunderstood, and Ethereum. And it is time now to bring Veritasium to the next level. So we're porting Veritasium from the Bitcoin blockchain over to Ethereum, but we are going to remain token agnostic. So we're still going to be um, using Bitcoin and accepting and trading in Bitcoin, as well as using Ether um, through Ethereum and using Ethereum smart contracting um, language. We're going to go take this and bring it even to the next level, and we're going to accept U.S. dollars through a U.S. dollar token. Very unique through our own proprietary method. Now, what are we going to do with the ability to, to uh, trade, uh, to, to use as an underlying currency, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and U.S. dollars? Well, the obvious, we're going to create synthetic ETFs. If you noticed, um, if you've been reading the news, a lot of entities are trying to bring Bitcoin ETFs to market through the SEC. The SEC has struck two down and most likely will struck other, strike the others down as well. Um, because they have, um, and it's a valid uh, concern, um, they're concerned that the underlying Bitcoin markets are not regulated. And if they're not regulated, then they can't basically pass um, must have an ETF pass must as a regulated entity dealing in regulated markets in which they can't surveil for fraud, etc. Now, um, I don't agree with everything that SEC said, but their basic premise um, does hold water from a regulator's perspective. Now, the big problem is in trying to take Bitcoin, okay, which is a peer-to-peer -peer technology, an autonomous technology that has its own blockchain, take the autonomous nature away from it, take the peer-to-peer -peer nature away from it, make it a dumb commodity like gold or like corn or like silver or like oil, and then send it to a centralized um, repository like a fund or ETF to be regulated by the SEC, which doesn't understand the um, characteristics and the capabilities of this technology, is a waste. It's basically taking a brand new 2017 Ferrari engine with the top technology and trying to force it and retrofit it into a horseshoe to um, make a horse and buggy run a little faster. So instead of four or five miles per hour, it now goes eight to 10 miles per hour. What we're doing is we're taking the technology of the blockchain, of small contracts, of autonomous peer-to-peer -peer technology, and we're giving holders of our tokens the ability Okay, to gain the same exposure that those who want to buy ETFs or mutual funds or hedge funds or private equity funds would have. So essentially, you buy our token okay, through the crowd sale, the ICO, which is approximately April 10th. You purchase our token. You get two things. First off, you get the ability to redeem it directly back to us for our financial analysis, um, customized research and expertise. Second, this token is the window, it's the key to enter into an entire universe that allows you to, cre um, to have pre-created ETF-like vehicles. Now, we can't give you an ETF because that would be running a file of the SEC, which is what everybody else is doing as they attempt to bring these vehicles to market. But what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the peer-to-peer -peer nature of the blockchain and allowing people who hold these tokens to purchase 
a software vehicle that gives the exact same exposure that an ETF would give with inherent liquidity, so you can buy and sell it, okay, with no counterparty risk, because there is no counterparty to default, with no credit risk, because there's no other party whose credit can go bad, and no balance sheet risk whatsoever. There's also more to it. You will also have uh, no fees whatsoever. In other words, there would be no management fees, no administration fees, no BS fees, no nonsense fees, no hidden fees, no exposed fees, no fees whatsoever, except for the fees inherent in the use of the actual blockchain, which we um, have, can't do anything about. Uh, now, how do we make money? Well, we'll make money the old fashioned way, right? Through advice and advisory. But accessing the actual exposure will be free. This is how Wall Street should work, okay? But Wall Street doesn't work this way. The way Wall Street actually works is um, they charge you commissions and fees, transaction items, etc., to access these vehicles. And they give their so called analysis or research away for free. Now, if the research was worth anything, why give it away for free? They give it away for free to sell the ability to sell, to charge you commissions, fees, etc. We're taking the Wall Street model, we're turning it totally upside down, okay? And we're being ev revolutionary, not evolutionary. So you're getting access to all these exposures, and over time, we plan to replicate many exposures. For instance, um, you take the software token, you buy it in exchange for... Um, uh, a S&P 500 index, uh, synthetic ETF-like exposure. So you get the full um, exposure to the uh, S&P 500 basis point by basis point, okay, in a decentralized entity where there's no server for anybody to hack into or to steal or no centralized server for anybody to steal, hack into, confiscate, or, um, conf uh, or bring down. You avoid these risks of counterparty credit and balance sheet exposure. You avoid the fees. And when it's time to sell, there's predefined liquidity pockets where you can sell up to a certain point. The more people you use it, the greater the liquidity. Okay. If the crowd sales are success, we fund instantaneous liquidity for the first few vehicles. And there will be a reserve to make sure each vehicle has liquidity from the get-go. Okay. This is interesting because we'll start off with the basics, such as we'll start off with the BTC Let's call this a synthetic ETF as a name for right now. We start off with a Bitcoin synthetic ETF and we'll start off with, say, an S&P 500 synthetic ETF. And then we replicate the most popular ETFs um, in the, you know, investing universe. And then once we get a certain amount, we start getting specialized. So we can create, say, a hedge fund synthetic ETF or a private equity synthetic ETF or New York um, high-end condo real estate short synthetic ETF, etc. The sky's the limit. Okay, these are vehicles that are completely software driven, completely smart contract um, handled, and um, much, much cheaper than the typical Wall Street driven um, actual ETFs. Um, a $500,000 investment um, over a 30 year period will cost you ex approximately 100% in fees, in terms of administration fees, management fees, advisory fees, etc. That's 100% of the initial investment that you're paying in fees. That money will go into the actual investable base, your, call, your basis for investment, if you could have a vehicle that doesn't have these fees to begin with. So again, we are taking not an evolutionary step, but a revolutionary step, turning the Wall Street model on top of its head. Okay, this is um, quite doable. And as long as we can successfully avoid regulatory hurdles, because we definitely want to obey the law and not get in trouble, um, we shouldn't have but so much competition because the reason why Wall Street is so expensive is there's a structural deficiency in them competing with low-cost models. The compensation at 38 to 55% of gross revenues is static because it can't be changed because of the culture of Wall Street, and it's excessive. Okay, They cannot match this even if they wanted to because they pay their employees too much, much too much.